This conference will now be recorded. Um, I will call the regular meeting, City Council meeting of May 20th, 2024, um, to order. Call order. Mayor Johnson? Here. Councilmember Kane? Here. Councilmember Mitchell? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Nowak? Here. Councilmember Wolchuk? Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the, the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Mm. Okay, approval of the agenda as printed. I move we approve the agenda. Or second. Oh. <laughs> Annie has it. Mayor Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Kane? Yes. Or er, I. Oh. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Noah? Aye. Councilmember Walsh? Aye. Aye. Are there any modifications to the agenda? Mrs. Mayor, I have one uh, modification today under item nine announcements. I would like to add part B Boys and Girls Club ribbon cutting. Okay. There a second? I will second. Okay, thank you. Councilmember King? Yes, aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Nowak? Aye. Councilmember Walchuk? Aye. And Mayor Johnson? Yes, aye. Motion carries. Sorry. <clears throat> Approval of the minutes. Any of regular session and closed session? Any changes? No, ma'am. Over to public comment. Citizens appearing before council on agenda and non-agenda agenda items shall be allowed a maximum of five minutes each to address their concerns. This is the only time during a council meeting that citizens are allowed to address the council. Please come to the podium and state your name and address. Online comments will be accepted after in-person comments are completed. All comments should be directed to the council and not to the audience. Anyone? Okay. Nope. So we'll move on to six public hearing. This is the preliminary fiscal year 25 city budget. <clears throat> okay, just a sec. <laughs> so I'm going to open the public hearing. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so the preliminary budget was presented on May 6th at the last meeting. And at that time, the general fund was expected to be at negative $714,657 at the end of fiscal year 25. I did make um, some changes. Um, as you recall from the last meeting, Chief Hamp um had some changes so i put those in and then um what else do i have uh marina there was an additional amount that needed to be transferred to make that whole um because the marina fund was expected to have a negative balance so i fixed that um and then i also noticed in the assessing department we needed a little bit more money there for, for some expenses so um that with those changes the general fund deficit at the end of fiscal year 24, when I presented it was supposed to be at $1,013,408 negative. Now it's $1,097,079. So it increased because we moved some expense from the fiscal year 25 budget into 24. Um, and then, so that changed, uh, like I said, it was 714,657 negative for fiscal year 25. Yeah. And now it is negative $657,133. And then um, if you go, if you're following along on the estimated revenues and expenditures by fund, if you go down to the Marina fund, the estimated fund balance at 630.24 is now zero instead of negative like it was before. 
Um, with those changes, we are still expecting the general fund balance at the end of fiscal year 25 to be at 20%, still the same. Um, and then just to go over for the public who may not have been here, last time I'm not gonna go through my whole presentation again, I'll just um, go over some of the highlights. Uh, okay, so general fund, unassigned fund balance, as I said, will be at 20% for fiscal year 25. Um, that percentage is at the top of the allowable percentage for according to the city's fund balance policy. The city's operating millage will be reduced from 15.9779 like it is or was for tax year 23. It's going to go to 15.9236 as the result of Headley. The DDA's millage is not subject to a rollback and the DART millage is currently expired and will appear on the August 6th ballot. The total taxable valuation of all property increased by 5.6% 5, 5 for the tax year 24. As a reminder, a, property's, a property owner's value can only increase by a maximum of 5% unless the property transferred ownership and is then uncapped in the calendar year after the sale. The taxable valuation for 23 increased by 6.56%. Um, across all funds, there was $13.1 million of capital projects in the capital improvement plan, and $10.9 million is in the fiscal year 25 budget. Um, the one page that did, so other the estimated revenues and expenditures by fund changed and then the next page that shows um, the estimate to be earned other than taxation that changed a little bit also because of the expenses so it just is still showing that we still don't have enough from taxation to cover all the city's expenses. We do have uh, five over five million is anticipated in revenue from taxation, and eight million is anticipated from other sources. So, grand total estimated revenue for the general fund is thirteen million thirty-five thousand. Total estimated general fund expenditures thirteen million six hundred ninety-two thousand. For a reduction from fund balance of six hundred fifty-seven thousand one hundred thirty-three dollars. So they're just kind of the main points of the budget. Does anybody have any questions or any clarification on anything? No, I have no questions. Okay. I'm going to open up public comment. Does anyone have a comment about the budget they would like to come up and address? Okay, so I'm going to close public comment. Did we receive any written requests, Anna? Um, so I'm going to close the public hearing and now council will discuss. <clears throat> any discussion? We have been working on this for a while, yes. and so I think that uh, made a few points on the last one, but I mean, uh, just other than thanking you again for all the work that has gone into this and, and the thought put through this, it's it's nice to see, having been here 11 years, a lot of the capital that we're able to accomplish this year. When I first came on in my first year, there was very, very little, um, so it's nice to see some of the projects coming around. and able to update some of the equipment that you know our service employees are using so it's nice to see all of that so thank all of the department heads and uh you know anna and your whole team for all the work and rachel for all the work that you guys have put into this i really really appreciate it so. yeah um so that being said um receive and file do we want to receive and file no we do receive and file i think so on this one uh, receive and file, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, I move that we were receiving file. Second. Council Member Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Noah? Aye. Council Member Walchuk? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Council Member King? Aye. Okay, we're to the consent agenda. 
A, bills to be allowed in the amount of $212,912.49, and authorize Mayor Johnson and Clerk Soik to sign the warrant. B, approval of a cemetery deed number 0300, by and between the City of Alpena and William and Vicki Keller in the amount of $0 for Block 18, Lot 1, for the use and purpose of a burial lot with perpetual care, authorize Mayor Johnson and Clerk Soik to sign the said deed. This is a transfer to the heir from a, a relative and therefore there is no fee. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. A second. Mayor Pro Tem Nowak? Aye. Councilmember Welchuk? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Keene? Aye. Aye. And now we are down to announcements. A. The terms for the mayor and two council members, members will expire on December 31st, 2024. The deadline for city candidates who are nominated by petition to the November general election is July 23rd, 2024 at 4 p.m. Nonpartisan non-nominating -nomin petitions and affidavits of identity forms are available in the clerk's office. Um, if you can do that. And B is, this, and, and I added this to the agenda because I went to the Boys and Girls Club um, ribbon cutting the other day, and I just wanted to say a few thank yous. So on Friday, May 17th, I had the honor of attending the public grand opening of the new Boys and Girls Club. The event was a testament to the collective efforts of our community leaders and organizations. The heartfelt speeches from individuals such as Jennifer Callery, Brad Summers, donors and, ded and the dedicated staff and their passion for the project deeply moved me. I cried several times. I also had the privilege of speaking briefly at the event and sharing the stage with Mayor Wallacora. His presence always adds a special touch to any event. It was a joy to see our city well represented. Um, with Councilman, Councilwoman Carol Walchuk, she was in attendance. Additionally, I was proud to see Chief Eric Hamp and Captain Andy Marceau, who stood in for Chief Rob Edmonds, along with their respective departments, who participated in the ribbon cutting and brought the ladder truck, ambulances, and police cruisers, which were a big hit with everyone, regardless of age. Your positive influence on the youth of our community is immeasurable, and you, are, you consistently demonstrate kindness and thoughtfulness, bringing joy to the kids. The kids will surely pay forward the kindness you have shown to them. On behalf of the council, thank you for everything you do for our community, but especially for your positive influence on the future leaders of Alpena. It matters and will pay dividends for years to come. Thank you. Well said, Mrs. Mayor. I want to cry again. <laughs> okay. I won't. So do we have a mayoral proclamation for the for the Blues Club. Um, so I'll read that. Put it up there so I can see it. Whereas the Alpena Blues Coalition was started in November 2003 for the purpose of furthering blues music awareness and appreciation, and whereas the first Alpena Blues Festival was held in 20, 2004 and subsequent su successful festivals have been held each year since, and whereas the Blues Coalition pro provides a program called the Blues in Schools Music Outreach as a way of raising awareness and educating students in it in traditional American blues music, and whereas events sponsored in the past include blues bands at the Friday Night Downtown Concert Series, blues performers at various venues around town, and fighting hunger in our community, and whereas over the years successful fundraisers have been held to support and promote awareness of upcoming Alpena Blues Festivals. This year's festival will be held on Saturday, June 15, 2024 at the Alpena County Fairgrounds. Now, therefore, I, Cindy Johnson, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Alpena, do hereby proclaim the week of June 9th through the 15th, 2024 as Alpena Blues Week in Alpena and urge all citizens to recognize and support the efforts of the Blue, Alpena Blues Coalition 20th Anniversary Blues Festival. And is anyone here? No? Okay. Um, we'll get that. We'll get that to them. Okay. <clears throat> Report of officers, boards, and commissions. A is addition 
of the of Mayor Johnson to the Citibank accounts, Anna and our Clerk Treasurer Finance Director Anna Soy. <clears throat> Oh. The allergies. <laughs> um, so per the accounting procedures manual for local units of government, each local unit must establish and maintain an adequate system of internal control. A required procedure is that dual signatures must be on all checks, except the tax collection checking account. Currently, my signature is the only one on all checks, and I think it's been that way for years even before me. Um, the dual signatures must be the clerk and the treasurer, or we must follow the charter. According to section 10.9 of the city's charter, no money shall be drawn from the city treasurer except upon warrant checks signed by the mayor and the clerk. In order for the mayor to be able to sign the checks, she must be added as a signer to the bank accounts. There are four accounts with three different banks that have checking accounts and therefore would need the mayor to be added as a signer. Was there any provision within that at all that a certain amount needed two signatures, such as anything that comes to council, it's just strictly everything that you have to pay, that you and the mayor would have to sign? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I looked for that because um, I was looking up some other policies and um, some will do at like maybe a $5,000 threshold. Anything above that would need two signatures, but that's not in the local unit of government accounting manual, it doesn't have a threshold. And so that leads me to believe that all checks need to be signed. But hopefully as we use the PNC purchasing card more, we won't have as many checks to sign. So right now um, in the interim while we're getting this set up, I'm having Leland sign as a second signer on all the checks. So mine goes on there digitally, which is allowed, and then a second signature would have to be handwritten. Okay. <clears throat> I'd move that we add uh, Mayor Cindy Johnson as a signer to the general fund account at Nicolay National Bank, the payroll fund at Huntington National Bank, and the Brownfield Authority at the and Trust Fund at the PNC Bank. A second. Any discussion? Yeah. Go ahead, Anna. Yeah. Councilmember Wolchek? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Noah? Aye. Okay, B is Council Policy Statement Number 57, and I'm going to turn this over to City Attorney Bill Piper. This is uh, Council Policy Statement Number 57. It's a policy to establish uh, and ensure transparency in compensating the mayor and members of the City Council for their services. So this outlines principles, procedures, criteria, criteria excuse me, governing that compensation. So state law provides that there uh, is a local officers' compensation committee. Uh, we have an ordinance that says that's how we'll establish salaries of the mayor. Council, what uh, occurred recently, uh, I think in their last establishment of uh, rates for the mayor and council members, there was some uh, discussion at their meeting about how should they be applying this. Uh, we have some specific policies. So this was primarily drafted by Ms. Smolinski with uh, some minor input by myself. But one of the uh, main things is uh, what came out of that meeting, as far as I understood it, was um, does the compensation committee have some authority to set your wages on uh, what would seem to be political in nature? What I mean by that is could they say um, we are going to cut salaries of the city council this year because we don't like what they did on water and sewer, or we don't like what they did on the ambulance contract with the county, uh, or we think they should have uh, done Culligan Plaza different. We don't like the design that they adopted. So what we wanted to do is just put some um, language in there that said that you know anything that's politically oriented or their opinion on your performance is not something they should be measuring. Uh, they should be measuring 
uh, the size of our community, uh, the amount of time that our members put in for their responsibilities, uh, looking at uh, what other communities um, you know, grant in terms of their wages. And so it's really just to be fair uh, to each of you as individual members, but also to be fiscally responsible to the city, the community, and then other communities of similar size. So uh, down at the bottom of page one, talks about determination and compensation. And uh, at the top of page two, that's the, the language of, um, you know, looking at the jurisdictions, looking at uh, any cost of living or inflation, looking at being fiscally responsible, but not allowing uh, any political activity or personal opinions affect the compensation that they think is fair uh, for the individual members. Um, so this will, uh, you know, this will obviously give council something to go to if there's a, an issue about how they should be uh, compensated, but it'll also give the local officers compensation committee a little bit more uh, direction as to what they can do and, and what they can consider at their meetings. So uh, if you're comfortable with this, uh, you could move to uh, vote to adopt it tonight. If you're not comfortable with it, you could uh, refer it back to staff with any uh, new changes and then we'll bring it back to you most likely at the next meeting for approval. Any discussion? I had no questions. Sure, sure, right yeah, and 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 this is something that the committee has asked for the, at least the last two times. What what direction? What guidelines? Um, so this is they've asked for it. I think this is a good document. It covers everything. And the only thing that in this one that's different than the last one too is they met every two years. Now they're meeting every year before budget time. Well, during budget time, so that every year. It can be determined, you know, raise, no raise, but it coincides with our budget. But I think it's a good document. Should we adopt? Yeah. Okay. I move that we adopt uh, Council Policy Statement Number 57, City Council Compensation Policy. A second. Any more discussion? No? Anna? Mayor Johnson? Yes. Councilmember King? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Nowak? Aye. Councilmember Walchuk? Aye. Thank you. Um, and now we're down to council committee reports. So we'll go around the table. If you don't have anything, you don't have anything. If you do, add it. I'll start with Aaron this time. If I started that way. That's I have nothing new to report. <laughs> Nothing new to report. Nothing new to report. The only thing that I want to remind people, and I'll do this, well, no, I won't because this will be the last time, is June 1st is electronic cleanup day. So if you have any electronics, um, um, please bring them out to Northern Lights Arena. Um, we will collect them there at that time from 8 until 1. And um, for those who use the recycling bins at Neiman's, um, we have moved those to Northern Lights because we were asked by the current um, occupant of that building to move them. So that happened today. So anyone who recycles, there'll be extra bins at Northern Lights and plenty of room. And that's all I have. The only thing I have to add is on uh, the target. The only thing I can report on is that the activity economically is still very strong here in Alpena. I know recently we've had a, a few uh, businesses that have either closed or it's been, it seems like it's in a downturn, but uh, the light is shining very brightly on Alpena still, um, and there are a lot of people taking a strong look at us, and uh, there are some companies out there expanding and looking into this area, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just stop, <clears throat> Chamber of Commerce, you already touched on Boys and Girls Club. I was just amazed at the number of people that, that came and supported this effort, because um, I remember back in the day on Chisholm Street where they separated the girls from the boys. It was just, um, nice to see all that support. Uh, the other is just for a uh, Chamber of Commerce blue ribbon cutting ceremonies, Maple Wood Tavern reopened. It was it was interesting. I'm enjoying getting to see all these ribbon cuttings, people prospering and opening up businesses. And that's it for me. Right. Thank you. So we have no communications. We're down to unfinished business. So council policy statement for council and mayoral appointments. And once again, I'm going to turn that over to the city attorney, Bill. 
Uh, council may recall last meeting, uh, this was presented as a partial council policy statement on this. We wanted to get something together since uh, we've got an election coming up and, uh, and I had raised some questions about, well, what do I, what can I use for acceptable proof of, uh, of somebody's residency status? And so uh, this uh, was presented to you last time. There were some <clears throat> suggestions for some additional language. And so this is the additional language. So if you're comfortable with this language now, we would simply need a motion to adopt this as a definition of taxpayer so that Anna can have you know, she can turn away who she'd like to turn away if they don't have <laughs> She's got some acceptable proof that she can show everybody else that this is what you gotta have. So, uh, you know, we we will uh, have a more comprehensive policy that we're gonna bring back later in the year, but we wanted to at least get something going because the deadline for filing is- July 23rd. Yeah, so it's coming up relatively soon. Hmm. Is there anyone have comments? Ready for motion? Yeah, it looks good to me. Press release um, this week to get that the word out that we are accepting petitions. Good. I move that we adopt the definition of taxpayer as contained within this memo for purposes of allowing the city clerk to have a standard for acceptable proof for council vacancies, mayoral appointments, and or eligibility for office in the city. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Council Member King? Aye. Council Member Mitchell? Aye. Aye. Council Member Walchuk? Aye. And Mayor Johnson? Aye. We're under new business. A, Alpina Marina, Gas and fuel bid recommendation. Harbor Sure. Please excuse my typo. Uh, the bid was opened May 7th, not April 23rd. Uh, so, but the city received and opened bids May 7th for the purchase and delivery of recreation gas and diesel fuel for the city marina. Uh, these products are sold dockside by the city as part of operations down there. Uh, bid documents were sent to three firms with two bids received. The results are the, of the bids are in the bid packet right here. Um, because of the continued Price fluctuation of recreational gas and diesel fuel, the suppliers are requested to bid based on their markup to the base price of these products at the time of delivery. In addition, prices are also requested for below minimum after hours, Sundays and holiday deliveries. Uh, Blarney Castle was the low bid for diesel fuel and recreation gas delivered to the marina. In addition, this price is below the state purchasing program price of 25 to 35 cents per gallon. And I'm recommending that council approve the award to Blarney Castle of Alpena, Michigan for the supply and delivery of recreational fuel to the Alpena Marina for a markup price of 0.150 and diesel fuel for a markup price of 0.175 plus the base price at time of delivery. Does anyone have questions for Kevin? No, no ma'am. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Oh. Thank you very much. I'll move to award the Blarney Castle of Alpena, Michigan, the supply and delivery of recreation gas to the Alpena Marina for a market price of um, 0 0.150, and diesel fuel for market price of, um, I guess, 17.5 cents, <laughs> 0 0.175, plus the base price at the time of delivery. Second. Any discussion? Right, Anna. Council Member Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Noah? Aye. Council Member Wolchuk? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Council Member King? Aye. Okay.
and B, we have ambulance fee schedule revisions, and we have Fire Chief Rob Edmund. Hello. Good evening. How are you guys? Um, so in discussing our ambulance fee schedule with our contracted EMS billing provider, uh, Mobile Health Resources, it was suggested we review and update our current fee schedule annually for ambulance services we provide. Third-party insurers like Medicare, Medicaid, and Blue Cross establish allowable fees for ambulance services and publish those revisions annually as they change. By not adjusting our rates and underbilling, we're essentially using tax money to subsidize commercial insurers' profits and leaves us with less revenue to operate from. <clears throat> Any allowable increases uh, assist in our long-term sustainability to provide key essential EMS services to the community for the future. Based on the annual revisions and allowable fees, we recommend the following ambulance rate increases to be approved and effective July 1st, 2024. And I've outlined what the current rate is um, and the proposed rate and the difference as well. Our interlocal ambulance agreement with Alpena County requires that we secure their approval to raise ambulance fees by more than 5%. As none of these rate increases exceed the 5% allowable, I do not need to present the fee schedule to the full board of the Alpena County Commissioners for input before the effective implementation date. I will still present these new rates for the records if you so approve the ambulance rates. So, so and I have a proposed millage there for you. I have questions. No. It will. It'll probably it'll increase revenue. Out <laughs> <laughs> about that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I keep rubber toes. Good. Yeah. I was hoping. Well, they changed the feature. Yeah, have to change in there. Um. Our ambulance transport fees line. So we've done 3.5 million for a couple of years now. We haven't really increased it. Is that the line that it would go to? Yes, it would. And I think it's like 1.3, right? The budget? Yeah, for the income, the revenue. I thought it was 3.5 million. We'll have to look at that. <laughs> I think we're going to refer this one back. Sounds like a budget adjustment, right? <laughs> we'll figure it out. <clears throat> so, I have to uh, make that adjustment, or do we want to just adjust it as we go through the year? What do you prefer? <laughs> I'm flexible. It may just be adjusted later. If we don't get it, then we'd be fine. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go to the expense side. Do you like a page number? Let's <laughs> transport fees. Oh, this is okay. So this is from the county. No, this is our revenue. This would be the revenue on the billing side. I think the number is like 1.35 million. It is 1.35. Why am I getting 3.5? Like her number better. <laughs> so do I actually. <laughs> okay. So it so, in, it would increase the revenue. Yeah. Not by a lot, but it would increase the revenue. So do we just keep it as is? in the budget and then, you know, just adjust the fee schedule. Okay. Maybe about 20 grand, oh. but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just leave it. Yeah. It's a lot of work to change stuff. Okay. Questions? Thank you. We got both. Move to approve the ambulance fee schedule as proposed to be effective July 1, 2024. Second. Second. 
Mayor Pro Tem Nowak? Aye. Councilmember Walchuk? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Motion carried. And C is Memo of Understanding between the City of Alpena and the Alpena County Land Bank Round 3 Light Elimination Program. We have Planning Development and Zoning Director, Montana Berman. Hello. Um, the City of Alpena is working in partnership with the Alpena County Land Bank and State Land Bank Authority to utilize $500,000 in grant funds for the Round 3 Blight Elimination Program. The program aligns with the City's Blight Ordinance Goals with the recently approved Capital Improvement Plan and the FY25 budget. City of Alpena staff will act as a subcontractor for authorized project activities. In order for this to occur, the City of Alpena and the Alpena County Land Bank must enter into an agreement to allow the city to act in this capacity, coordinate activities, and support upfront expenses for future reimbursement by the grant. There are currently six properties that are being targeted for demolition, of which four are residential properties and two are commercial. The memo of understanding is attached for your review. Required federal language is included as a requirement to receiving grant funds in the appendix. The city will be working closely with a consultant assigned to the city by the State Land Bank Authority on all requirements, activities, and timelines for each property. So essentially, the MOU is giving the city the ability to work directly with the State Land Bank Authority. I've been included in many of those conversations already because they're city properties that we've proposed. Um, however, I'm not actually on the Land Bank Authority locally, so this gives me an avenue to work in coordination with them, um, including managing RFPs, coordinating projects, um, and working within the State Land Bank authorities system to upload documents and report on uh, project progress. So um, it is a reimbursement grant. So that would mean that for these properties that we're involved in, the city would um, pay for, pay those invoices for those demolition activities. And then we would be reimbursed after the project is complete. So for five of the six projects, uh, the city is coordinating and paying for all of those activities up front. For one of the projects, which is a commercial project, the owner also has some responsibility. So in their agreement, which they've already signed, um, they know that we can't be reimbursed until the, the project is fully complete. So if they don't hold up to their end of that, then it gives the city the right to go in and finish it to ensure that we can be reimbursed and that that project is completed. So. Um, that is pretty much uh, the what the reason is for the MOU, and we've been working with the State Land Bank and the County Land Bank. I've been attending their meetings um, every week just to make sure that we're all um, working together and um, making sure everything is buttoned up um, and everything is moving forward. Any questions? The only question that came to mind as you were speaking is the um, there's quite a bit of work, obviously, that goes into any of the requests for proposals to demolition itself. Is there provisions within that at all to reimburse for any of the administrative fees that the city is going to incur on those properties? There is. Great question. Um, up to 8% of the grant award um, can be reimbursed for administrative activities. All of those have to be documented. So all of the work that I've been doing up to this point, I've been documenting. And as we continue, I'll document those as well. And the reimbursement is done by project, not for the entire amount, which is good. So as we finish one, we'll be reimbursed um, sooner. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you say the reimbursement comes from the county or the state? So the state land bank does the reimbursement, but their agreement is with the county land bank. So they reimburse the county, and then with the MOU, the county then turns and reimburses us for those expenses. Okay, so and and I had and I have a couple of questions about that. So um, when we have to put this money up front to do these demos, and I think the land bank is wonderful. Where are we taking that from? Where do we take that from? Those funds from? So we budgeted five hundred thousand in a code enforcement um, line item. Yeah, didn't we call it blight elimination? Mm -hmm. I created a department within the general fund for blight. Okay. Blight. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so we would upfront with general fund numbers. Okay. So then I have a question about the contract because in um, in this on the page uh, it'd be page two of the contract number six said says the property owner shall complete the given project um, which shall be funded by the city and or the property owner under no circumstances shall the land bank be required to contribute to the funds of the project etc cetera, etc cetera. but then you get down to eight. And it says, if all conditions are met and the, and the land bank approves, the grant funding is received and the property owner shall be reimbursed. But the property owner is not the one putting up the fund. Well, that's correct. But in, in, a, in a few instances for that one commercial project in particular, there are some engineering expenses that were approved by the state land bank as part of the demolition that they would, you know, front the money for that could be reimbursed through the grant. So it with that one, um, because the, the amount is higher, we essentially said that the grant will pay up to a certain dollar amount and beyond that, they are responsible. But depending on how the expenses end up for all of our projects, we've made a budget for all of the projects. If we have additional funds, we could certainly pay for some of those other activities that we didn't um, pay for up front, as long as they're allowed through the grant. But I guess my question is in number eight, so if all conditions are met and the land bank approves it and grant funding is received, shouldn't it be the, prop the city slash property owner because shouldn't it be wherever the money came from um it go back to this just says the property owner we could amend that to say <laughs> city or property owner because if they have money and get it back they get it back but mm -hmm. where does it give us money back um but if if the necessary conditions are not met, then the land bank does not approve the project and or disbursement of grant funds doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Are we then we're left holding the bag if we. So that's one of the benefits of having a representative through the state land bank. We're meeting with them every two weeks. They're reviewing all of our documentation, including access and demo agreements, RFP documentation, bid documents, um, documents that we receive, everything to make sure, because they want us to receive the funds. Um, so they're working with us to make sure that we do. Um, could something happen that would be unexpected, I suppose, um, but that's not anticipated working with them the way that we're planning to. And then this is good until April 2026. Correct. Yeah. So grant funds are through 2026. So a project, does it have to be approved then first by the state land bank before we can yes. do it? Yes. And they have approved um, all of them up to this point. There's one project that has a contingency on it right now until they receive a few additional documents from the property owner, but otherwise all of them have been approved um, as far as conceptually moving forward with RFPs and actually doing the work. So if the property owner didn't do the work and we had to step in and do the work, then we would be reimbursed through the land. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And that there's only one property that, um, I mean, essentially, we're paying, we are coordinating all of the activities. Um, there's one property where they would be on the hook to pay for some of those activities, but we're coordinate, coordinating everything and making sure everything is being done um, at the site and then paying for those activities, ensuring that everything is being coordinated correctly. Because if you had each individual property owner trying to do it, it just it probably wouldn't work very well. Okay. Okay, well, those were my concerns, questions. I just don't want to see us mm -hmm. owing money. Anyone else? Uh, just one quick question. Bill, have you been able to read through this and are completely comfortable with it? I am, yes. So, and, sh and should we add city? Yeah, we should add that. I would, I would agree with that. Number eight? Number eight, yeah. yeah. Okay.
Okay. So does someone want to make a motion? Well, we, uh, I move that we approve the memo of understanding between the city of Alpena and, and the Alpena County Land Bank uh, support activities of round three blight elimination as amended. Yeah, I'm on Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Any more discussion? Good. Mm -hmm. Council Member Walchuk? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Council Member Kane? Aye. Council Member Mitchell? Aye. And Mayor Pro Tem Noah? Aye. Great. Thank you. Um, D, we have noise ordinance variance request for Joe's Bar on June 8th, 2024, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. and on July 20th, 2024, from 10 p.m. to, to 1 a.m. And we have Denise French, Joe's Bar. <laughs> Hi, Denise. How are you? Good. Uh, this is the first time I've been called in to do this. I've been doing this for 39 years and have never had to come in. <laughs> you guys usually just sign it and I'm good to go. But uh, they said I should probably show up here in case you guys had questions. And I think it's because it's it's it goes till 1 a.m. I think the the ones we've approved in the past went till midnight, I believe. The old ones all went till 1 o'clock. Just last year, either the last one or the one two, then you guys decided midnight. But before that, it's always been one o'clock. Okay. Like it's in the back of the bar, it's fenced in. The speakers are all headed out to the lake, and I really have no neighbors, you know, on either side of me, that kind of stuff. But I guess whatever everybody's comfortable with. Okay. I think we just wanted to see your pretty face. Yes. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Sure. Um, normally, when we approve these, if there's a request put in the following year. And we've approved this then you usually don't have to come back but i was under the impression that the time change had moved to 1 a.m 12. no but and that that's my mistake for that um so anyway um so any questions for no, no. 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 always done well so i'll entertain a motion I, uh, go ahead oh i mean i I don't see any proposed language, so I'm going to take a stab at it. I'll um, make a motion or move to allow the noise ordinance uh, variation to occur for Joe's Bar for July 20th, 2024, um, for their auction, live auction, band, and benefit for Friends Together and Hope Shores Alliance to allow them to play outside music from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. on the 21st. Second. A couple of things, if I may. Um, I believe there was two dates in there, June 8, 2024 and July 20th, and it was from 10 p.m. to, to 1 a.m. Oh, there yeah. are. Yeah. I think the event starts at 9, but our noise ordinance starts at 10. 10. Okay. Inclusive of uh, Mr. Nowak's additions. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> no? Do, do we want to go through it again? Well, uh, Councilmember Mitchell seconded the first time. Oh, okay. And the amendment. So I, I would second the amendment. So you're gonna, you're seconding the. the seconding amendment. the amendment too. And if we need, if she could third it. <laughs> Mayor Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Kane. Aye. Councilmember Mitchell. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Noah. Aye. And Councilmember Walchek. Aye. Thank you, Denise, and good luck with your events. So is it till 12 or 1? Till 1. Till 1. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we have noise ordinance variance request for Michigan Brown Trout Festival on July 19, 20, 26, and 27, 2024, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. And we have Phil Pocat. And regretfully, Phil Pocat cannot be here, so I have me. Um, my name is Chuck Stern. Chuck Stern. Uh, I'm the vice president of grounds for the Michigan Brown Trout Festival. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. So does anyone have any questions for Mr. Stern? No, just no. to thank you for all the work your committee does to 
putting this on and you know we appreciate all the efforts and i mean it's a great it's a great festival for the community and then i forget 30 plus years that it's been going on i've enjoyed it myself and i really do appreciate all the volunteers that do help out during that time 30 plus but this is our 50th year 50th year okay all right that long. <laughs> but that was nine. <laughs> <laughs> My first experience with the Brown Trout Festival was 1986 when the Tackle Air Command set my group up here to evaluate the Vermont National Guard. And believe me, we needed the big tit after a day of <laughs> killing people, if you will. We have, it, was a, it was a fun time. But it's what helped me convince me to, to move to Alpena. It was such a great area, so I guess. That and grandkids. Thank you. Thank you. No other questions from me, Ms. Mayor. No questions. Questions? Just well, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Okay, I move that we approve the noise ordinance variance request for the Michigan Brown Trout Festival on 19, 20, 26, and 27th of 2024 from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. And that was in July, correct? July. 1920, 26, and 26. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? No. No, ma'am. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Nowak? Aye. Councilmember Wolchak? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. And now we have outdoor Mexican fiesta in the space located behind Mango's Tequila Bar on July 22nd, 2024, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And Arturo Mendez from Mango's is here. Hello, good evening, everyone. So the idea of doing the Mexican fiesta, and we thought about calling it something different, like tacos and tequila, but we don't want to scare families. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want to scare families and think it's going to be just about getting drunk and, you know, nothing like that. We want to be like, do something for the kids and family as well, like doing piñata on one side, mariachi band on the other side for the adults. And uh, yeah, that's kind of like the idea. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea. Uh, you know, when, uh, when Eric told me about that he was closing, that actually made me a little bit upset because I think that he was doing like a really good uh, job, like doing events. By doing events, it was bringing people to the downtown. It was bringing people to the other restaurants. And I mean, with having him gone, like we need to start, keep it going. So maybe this might be the first one doing it, but I'm hoping it's not the last one. We really appreciate yeah, it. No. Yeah. That's well said because we really do appreciate all the, the efforts that you're, you're making down there and, and grabbing that, uh, you know, by the lead here and you're taking the lead on this and, and having that event. Um, you know, it is going to be one of the disappointments in the downtown of some of the events that the Fresh Palette did. Yes. But it is fantastic that you grabbed a hold of that and said, hey, let me, uh, you know, take a hold here. So well, and I appreciate everything that you're doing and how you're making it more of a family event as well. So and I know that your restaurant very well. So I know that is very family oriented. So thank you. Thank you. Also, you know, having another event for just adults. <laughs> <laughs> we, I thought about that already. From eight to I think that you found your chairperson. <laughs> uh, the, you know, on the future, we tried to do at least two events per year when Eric was doing it. It was working really well, but uh, at the same time, we don't want to be like overwhelmed neither. And, you know, hopefully some of the other businesses, they try to do at least one every once in a while, or maybe who knows, combine with all the business and try to do one like a mall a bigger event so we can bring more people to the downtown, not just to the downtown, like in general to Alpena, you know, from the all our surrounding areas. I have a question for you. Are, yes. Are you going to be able to make use of the little pocket park there? For example, will you use your the band? Will that go in the little I think place next to the restaurant? I think that if the van is going to be by the uh right by the handicaps uh parking spaces and the reason why we want a little bit more space so people can sit in there i mean if you, we we want to provide chairs and stuff like that but if we put the chairs on the grass they might be yeah. going on the ground so we want the chairs to be more into the parking area 
Well, this is fantastic, and I can't wait. So I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the outdoor Mexican fiesta space located uh, behind Mango's Tequila Bar on June 22nd, 2024, from 4 until 8 p.m. Second. Any discussion? Anna? Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Nowak? Aye. Councilmember Wolchuk? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. And I hope to see you all there. <laughs> uh, don't forget City. It's adult only night. Yeah. <laughs> to that. Mrs. Yeah. Mayor, hearing that, I move that we adjourn. And we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody over there. Did you second? I didn't hear no, you. I just heard. Oh. He always says third. Um,